All right there, everyone. Support for the Nationalist Alternative for Germany Party surges as protests in the city of Chemnitz continues. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. If this is your first time here, welcome. Welcome to our channel. I post a video twice a day on current events in light of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. And you can help us continue to do that in three ways. First, by clicking on the Patreon link below, becoming a monthly supporter. Second, by taking advantage of our current book deal where you can get my book, Classical versus Modern Education, for only 99 cents at the link below. And the third is simply by hitting that bell and subscribe button. It'll be an absolute privilege and pleasure to have you as part of this channel. All right. So many of you may already be familiar with the uh, series of protests that have been taking place in the city of Chemnitz in eastern Germany since Sunday. These protests are in response to the, tr uh, the just the, well, the fatal stabbing of a 35-year-old German man, allegedly by two uh, immigrants, an Iraqi and a Syrian. They've both been arrested in connection with the stabbing. Apparently, these two guys were being rude or even assaulting a German uh, woman. It's a bit unclear, but whatever it was, this German fellow stood up, defended her, and these two guys allegedly, these, this Iraqi and Syrian fellow, uh, killed him. They stabbed him to death. Now, needless to say that the streets in Chemnitz have blown up with protests and marches demanding an end to immigration and the sealing of borders and bringing some kind of sanity back to Germany. But if you look at the way Angela Merkel and the corporatist media are responding, you would think that the real crime is xenophobia and racism and intolerance and far-right neo-Nazi sentiments. Uh, the, the reports, virtually to a T, all the reports coming out are saying that the demonstration and protests are made up entirely of far-right activists and neo-Nazis. They highlight that now immigrants are becoming victims of violence. Merkel has denounced what her spokesman calls riotous assemblies that hunt people down who appear to be from different backgrounds or attempt to spread hate in the streets, and this has no place in our country. That's the response that Germans are getting from their government. And then you have here in the state CNN reporting that, well, a Syrian man was attacked Wednesday evening by three German men hurling xenophobic insults, and that, that the German police were in fact investigating this as a hate crime. A hate crime. Folks, you have just watched in both Merkel's and the corporatist globalist media's response to all this. You have just watched them dig their own grave. You have watched globalism dig its own grave. It's over. I'll predict it here and now. The globalist experiment of the EU is now officially over. From now on, it's just a mop-up mission. It's just a cleanup mission. It may take several years, but this is over, and I'll tell you why. Now, frankly, I'm, uh, I'm cheating here because I would have said that it was all over even if the Chemnitz protests weren't taking place. And this is simply because scholars such as Samuel Huntington and Stepan Mastrovich of Texas A&M, these scholars have long recognized over the last few decades, that is, that the globalist world is in fact coming apart. It's collapsing. It's imploding. Now, globalism is a huge colossus. It's a massive political, economic, and indeed even a, a cultural superstructure made up of transnational institutions and arrangements and protocols that are all interlocked into what is more or less a single worldwide system. So this is not something that just kind of keels over. But make no mistake, because it is a massive transnational interlocking system, when one component collapses, you can be sure uh, that the other components are going to implode as well. Now, why is this globalist world order fracturing? Well, it's fracturing because every single inch of globalism is built on the philosophical commitment to modernity. And modernity is simply the belief that rationality, particularly scientific rationality, is the one true way of understanding reality for all people, for all times, for all places. And thus, scientific rationalism and its globalist spawn, as it were, serves as the sole objective social order, the one true political, economic, and cultural system 
for all populations throughout the globe. And this view, which was dominant in the 20th century, this notion of scientific rationalism as the one true way of understanding reality for all people, times, and places, this view has collapsed. It's collapsed philosophically in the hearts and the minds of Westerners. And as a result of this collapse, the world is balkanizing. The world's turning away from globalism and globalization, and it's returning back to nation, culture, custom, tradition, land, language, ethnicity as the basis for social order. This is exactly what we are seeing in places like Hungary and Poland, Czech Republic and Slovakia and Slovenia and Bulgaria and Croatia, Italy. We're increasingly seeing in uh, the Nordic nations such as Denmark, Norway, Finland, Estonia. Right now, the Swedish Democrats, the Nationalist Populist Party in Sweden, is poised to win a record number of seats in the Swedish parliament in just over a week from now when they're national elections. They are all but guaranteed to almost double the seats that they got from the last election back in 2014, which doubled the amount that the seats they got back in 2010. And this, of course, brings us to the other news of the day. And that is the latest polls for the Nationalist Party, the alternative for Germany, also known as the AFD. The latest polls over the last several months actually show that the AFD is just surging in support. They're now polling upwards of eight, uh, 17, 18 percent, all the while Merkel's party, the Christian Democratic Union, is collapsing in the polls. It's at some of its lowest levels of support ever. In fact, they had one of their worst performances in the last election since World War II. By contrast, the AFD alternative for Germany, which got 13% of the vote in the last election, which was their first election, they're just growing in support. They're surging in influence. And so these protests in Chemnitz and the rise of the AFD, they can be construed really as the latest in a massive series of ruptures to this modernist globalist world order. More than this, and I think this, this will really bring it home for us, Scholars like Stepan Mastrovich have noticed that all of this balkanizing is happening all over the world, all the while globalist leaders have no idea what to say to it. <laughs> you have acts of violence like this committed in Germany, and all the current crop of globalist leaders and corporatist media know how to respond to this is by apologizing on behalf of the immigrants, the immigrant community on the one hand, right, and then turn around and excoriate and denounce as far-right neo-Nazi extremists anyone who wants their nation back. People are not necessarily against immigration per se, but they are against immigration on globalist terms. These very terms that apologize for the immigrant and denounce the citizen. Globalists make excuses for the immigrant all the while denigrating the concerned citizen as nothing more than a far-right extremist Nazi. In other words, globalist elites have an effect. Uh, they're basically saying they would rather have Middle Eastern immigrants than far-right extremists. This in turn explains why you have the rise of populism all over the world. Because there's just this radical disconnect between the globalist elites who continue to export the fruits of modernity in the form of mass globalist-inspired immigration, on the one hand, and then the populists who want nothing to do with a modernist globalist system that has philosophically died in the hearts and minds of the world's population. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse, this divide, that is, between the elites and the populace. When you throw violence into the mix here, into this divide. You now begin to see the exasperation of a key insecurity that was identified by the sociologist Mabel Berezin, known as border insecurity. We've talked about this many times in this channel. Because the constituents of globalization, such as uh, transnational corporations, uh, electronic money, and the like, because they all transcend national borders, Many scholars believe that globalization is bringing an end to the whole concept of distinct uh, nations. And as Paul Harris has observed, these porous borders, which serve to expedite flows of goods within a globalized economy, they entail a significant increase of 
mass levels of immigration, both legal and illegal. And then the threat of terrorism and acts of violence like this one committed in Germany only exasperate the anxieties over the porous borders among the national population, which in turn creates a mass anti-immigration border security backlash. And that's, of course, what we're seeing all over the world, but particularly here in Germany. Even the far left, the Die Linke Party, we, we talked about this the, uh, the other day's video. Even the political left in Germany is talking about closing the borders and stopping immigration. Since unfettered immigration is considered to be inconsistent with maintaining social services and the welfare state and services for the poor. And so this entire attempt to try to contain and quell that mass uprising that's rising all throughout Germany, indeed all over Europe, is just too little too late. Whether we look on the political right or the political left, we're seeing a clear trend among voters towards nationalist and populist sentiments that want the borders closed and secure. They want immigration uh, ended and in many cases reversed and that want their national leaders to defend and protect their citizens of a nation rather than apologize for and pander to immigrants. Those days are coming. There's nothing that the globalist elites in Europe can do to stop it. We are seeing nothing less than a new nationalist populist age rising in our midst. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on our Patreon link below. Become a monthly supporter of our channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of awesome conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.